I have a new logo and I want to 3D print it. In fact, I already did. Ta da! So today, I want to show you my workflow of going from a 2D graphic image to a Fusion 360 file to a 3D printed logo. It's a workflow that you can easily replicate. This is my original logo, but I wanted something a little more simple to manufacture. So I contacted one of my Makerspace students at the Norwalk Community College who recently graduated with a degree in graphic design. Her name is Diana Christine and she does excellent work as you'll see in a minute. I'm gonna leave a link to her website below so if you happen to need a logo or a business card design or just graphic design in general, contact her. So I had a Zoom meeting with Diana, you know, COVID style and basically explained that I wanted a logo that would be simple to 3D print and laser cut but also illustrates the essence of desktop makes. And that essence is accessible desktop fabrication that easily allows you to go from idea to physical part. I wanted an emphasis on 3D printing as that is mostly what I do, at least for now. So here's what she came back with. We have the light bulb, which represents the brilliant idea. You have the glow of the light bulb in the shape of a gear, which represents the physical part. So the physical part coming out of the idea. At the same time, you see that the light bulb is extruding and building the words desktop makes. The layer lines in desktop makes paying tribute to the layer lines in 3D printing. I love that it hasn't fully completed printing yet, but still in the process. But it's far enough along that you can easily make out the words. I'm very happy with the logo. I think Diana hit the nail on the head here. Now to 3D printing it. Originally, I was going to bring the image into Fusion 360 as an attached canvas, trace the gear and light bulb, extrude it, and then type the text as a sketch and extrude that. But then I decided since I have the Illustrator file, I can simply export it as an SVG and import the SVG into Fusion 360. However, <laughs> one small problem, I canceled my Adobe license a few months ago. And without Illustrator, I can't open the Illustrator file. I just wasn't using the Creative Cloud applications enough to justify the monthly cost. Adobe now only offers their software as a monthly subscription. Even with the education license, uh, it was costing me $30 a month. Given how rarely I use Illustrator, Photoshop, and Lightroom, I decided it was time to find other solutions. So I looked for an Illustrator alternative and came across Affinity Designer. Now I had been eyeing Affinity Designer for a while, but finally had a reason to dive in. So I downloaded their trial software. I wanted to be sure that the workflow would work first before committing to $50. And by the way, this is a one-time $50 payment, not a subscription. Okay, let's check out this workflow. So I've got Affinity Designer here opened up. I just simply went to File, down to Open. Grab my .ai, that Illustrator file, and then click open, and then open again. And there it is, it just it threw all the pages here on Affinity, so it seems to open it fine. And I really just want to export this page right here. So I'm going to hold Option and use the scroll wheel to zoom in. And I'm going to select everything here that I want. And now I simply went to File, down to Export. And the preset here, I simply selected SVG up here. DPI, I went with the lowest, which was 72. And in area, I'm gonna go with selection without background and then click export. I'll click save. And now I can go back to Fusion and let's open up a new design over here. And all I'm gonna do here is go to insert down to insert SVG. I'm gonna select the plane I wanna throw this on. I'll choose my XY plane. Click here to grab my design. I'll go to my downloads folder here. And here it is, my .svg. I'll click open. See the preview there? And here it is. So it throws it in here. The one thing you will have to do is scale it. Judging by the little grids on my screen, I can see that this is about 32 millimeters or so. I want it to be 200 millimeters wide. So I'm simply gonna divide 200 by 32 which gives me a scale factor of 6.25. So I'll go ahead and type that in and click OK. Now that I have scaled it to the right size, I'm going to select everything E4 extrude and I'm gonna extrude this out nine millimeters. 
Next, I need to create a back plate for this. As you can see, all the letters are segmented, so I need something to hold everything together. So I'm gonna create a sketch on the back here. Use the rectangle tool to just create this sort of plate on the back. And then I'm simply gonna use the rectangle and circle tool to do the same thing uh, around the light bulb and gear. And that way I have now something that the letters and the logo can stick to. After creating the back sketch, I selected the entire profile and extruded it out one millimeter. There was one part I was concerned about, and that was the bottom portion of the light bulb here. Yeah, the part where it's actually supposed to screw in, the little screw threads. So these just weren't thick enough. Um, I measured it at about 0.6 millimeters. I'm going to be printing with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, so uh, I think I'm going to have to make them a little bit thicker uh, to get a little more detail out of there. So what I did was I went back to the original sketch, to the actual SVG file that I brought in, and you can actually offset those. So I used the offset tool here to select um, the original sketch lines there and offset it um, 0.4 millimeters out. And I applied these to each of um, these little, I don't know, sort of eyeball shape um, <laughs> geometry here. And so after that, then I was able to use that sketch to extrude it down. And that allowed me to have these thicker profiles that I feel a lot more comfortable with. I also don't need these edges to come to such a sharp point, so I'm going to apply a small fillet here. If we take a look back at my logo, we can see that the light bulb in Mix is orange while desktop is blue. Now with my 3D printer and the setup that I have, the only way I can vary color is by height. So I can tell the printer when you get to this specific layer, go ahead and eject the filament and I'll put in a new color. So in order to do this, I'm going to have to extrude the word desktop to be higher than the light bulb and makes. To accomplish this, I'll simply select all the top surfaces on the word desktop and extrude that up one millimeter. Okay, it's ready to print now, so I'll simply go to make 3D print and I'm gonna select my Prusa slicer here, which I have under custom. I'm printing this with PLA and simply going with their fast default setting here of 0.35 millimeter layer height. Now within a Prusa slicer, it's pretty easy to set up which layers you want the printer to go ahead and change the filament. You simply drag this slider up and down and click on the exact layer. And once the printer gets to the layer you set, it'll go ahead and unload the filament and the printer will begin beeping to warn you to go ahead and put in new filament. Now to see what I have for filament. So I was able to find this Matter Hackers Clear PLA. And unfortunately, this is the closest I have to orange. This is a Polyalchemy Elixir Copper. Uh, it'll have to do for now until I order some uh, orange that really reflects my actual brand color. Uh, now I just need blue. And I have a stash here above my printer, as you can see. And ah, there you go. I have a little bit here left in this spool. Now remember, the blue only needs to finish the last few layers of the word desktop. It's not much, but it'll definitely get the job done. This is a, another Poly Alchemy Elixir. Uh, Emerald City is the color. Here you can see we have our clear backing layer that printed first. I then swapped the filament to put in our orangish color. Next, uh, here's the process and I'll show you um, how you actually swap the filament here. The printer is just going to stop and it'll begin beeping and at this point it already unloaded the filament. So all I have to do here is pull out the color and put my new color in. I'll go ahead and insert it and hit the button once uh, it's feeding through and the filament will begin to purge. Now what you want to do here is make sure that it's coming out completely uh, in the color that you want because it's going to go through a blending process where it purges the old color and then you get sort of a blending of the uh, two colors and then you'll get the clean new color coming out. Once you're all set, you just uh, remove the old blob, tell the printer to continue and it'll pick up right where it left off. And as you can see here, we're getting the first layer of our blue of desktop here being printed. And here's the final result. I'm very happy with the way this turned out. I do have some real orange filament on the way so that I can reprint this with my actual colors. And we'll be going bigger next time. I'm gonna try this again on my CR10. And I definitely see some LED backlighting upgrades in the future. 
So what'd you think of this workflow? Let me know in the comments below. I'm interested to hear if you're using a similar workflow um, or even if you're using a different type of vector editing software to create uh, SVG or DXF and bring that into Fusion 360 as a 2D image and then extruding it into 3D shape. I think you can do a lot with the spline tool in Fusion 360 to create some neat designs, but having a dedicated vector editing software um, like Illustrator or in this case Affinity Designer uh, really gives you more control and a lot more flexibility. So it's a workflow that I'm excited to use more and definitely excited with Affinity Designer just because um, of the price point. It seems to be very powerful. Now I haven't played around with it too much. Really what I showed you today is kind of the full extent um, that I went with it. But I'm really looking forward to sitting down with that software a little more and really learning it and incorporating Incorporating it into my Fusion 360 workflow. And at $50 as a one time purchase, it looks very attractive to me. So stay tuned for more videos that involve this type of workflow. All right, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel where I'll be doing more of these. And if you're looking to get started with Fusion 360, check out my quick start mini series that I have linked below. I've been mentioning it for the past few weeks and I've actually am continually updating it. So it looks um, a bit different than it did a few weeks ago. I've put together a series of beginner projects that will introduce you to Fusion 360, to the tools, to the design techniques um, to get you quickly up and running in creating your own models. Check it out if you're looking for a very easy to follow way to get started with Fusion 360 and it uses the new Fusion interface. Uh, I know a lot of tutorials out there are still using sort of that old interface and uh, haven't updated to the new that Fusion is, is currently using. So, um, and if you're a beginner, it, it can be quite a bit of a pain to try to navigate how things got moved around. So uh, that's a big plus. So check it out. Like I said, I've been updating it. So it's actually looking a little bit different than it did a few weeks ago, constantly tweaking it to try to make it better based on feedback that I get. So the link for that is down below. I hope you found this video valuable and I will see you in the next one.